refrigerant and lubricant interactions. That's the topic for today's episode of Check Up with Dr. Chuck. Hello everyone, welcome back again to another episode. Today I want to talk about refrigerants and lubricants and how they interact, uh, particularly in a system, and their impacts on each other. So this is going to be a two-part video. Today I want to talk about some of the basic properties of lubricants as they are impacted by refrigerants, things like viscosity, solubility, miscibility. Uh, help explain what those mean and how they come into play in an operating system. Second part of the video, I'll talk more about uh, oil management, things like oil return, oil logging, foaming, flooded startups, those type of uh, problems, how to avoid them uh, in operating systems. But for today, I want to dive into the chemistry side of things. And uh, let me just start off by saying there are a lot of experts on lubricants out there and there's a lot of information. And my intent is not to uh, displace all that information. There's plenty of good sources out there uh, that you can find on the basics of lubricants and refrigeration oils. But specifically, when refrigerants and oils come together, that's really what I want to focus on today. So let me just start off by talking about the different types of refrigerant oils out there. Um, a lot of them go by acronyms. But starting off with things like mineral oil that's been around, been the workhorse for decades. You know, that is sourced basically from uh, petroleum feedstocks and uh, really was used extensively with the CFC and uh, HCFC refrigerants. Alkyl benzenes are kind of a synthetic version of mineral oil and again used extensively with CFCs and HFCs. As we got into the HFC generation of refrigerants, we had to make a change in lubricant type and really went to what is known as the POEs or the polyol esters. And uh, this is a very important class of lubricants, and I'll spend a little bit of uh, time explaining exactly what uh, those are. But for completeness, there's the polyvinyl uh, ethers, very similar to the POEs, a little more of a refined grade, a uh, little more expensive, but have some uh, additional beneficial properties. And then polyalkylene glycol, which are predominantly used in the automotive or mobile AC market. We won't talk about them today. We'll focus more on the stationary side. But let me take a minute to explain exactly what, from a chemical or chemistry uh, viewpoint, a polyol ester is. And this word ester is an organic chemistry term. And an ester is really the result of a condensation reaction that is a combination of an alcohol and an acid, organic alcohol with the OH, and an organic acid with the uh, carboxylic acid group there. Those split out a molecule of water and combine together to form the ester molecule. And those are uh, designations there from organic chemistry. That can be any type of structure of a basically a hydrocarbon uh, organic backbone. So by varying the R groups, you can really fine tune the uh, properties of the lubricant that you end up with. So that's the basic ester molecule. And if we expand that a little bit, and instead of having a simple uh, alcohol with just one OH group, we have a polyol alcohol. So it's basically a bigger molecule, more complex, uh, with a lot of OH groups on there. That can again react with organic acids when these things are manufactured. And all these R's and R primes and R double primes are just show the variety that you can have uh, to fine tune the viscosity grades, uh, the properties. But when that polyol reacts with the acid, then you have a polyol ester. And again, water uh, is the byproduct. A couple of important things here. Water is the byproduct. And you'll notice from the double-headed arrow in the equation, this is a reversible reaction. So in the next video, we'll talk a little more about what happens uh, when water reacts with PoE and uh, can actually drive the reaction the other way. But essentially, that's uh, where the name PoE comes from. So I really want to focus on four um, properties that result when a refrigerant interacts with a lubricant. Compatibility, viscosity, solubility, and miscibility. Sometimes these are used interchangeably, but they're all slightly different. I want to explain to them how I think about them and really how that's important when you get into a system. So compatibility is pretty straightforward. When we talk about compatibility in, in refrigeration chemistry and even with lubricants, uh, it's really a chemical reactivity uh, type of compatibility. 
And this comes into more play, more into play in uh, materials compatibility when we're looking at things like uh, varnishes, plastics, elastomers, rubbers, polymers, things that can be in seals or coatings, uh, even things like pipe dope and, and machining oils that aren't meant to end up in the system can get in there. And if those things can undergo a chemical reaction, it can degrade either the material itself and or the refrigerant and or the lubricant. Uh, for the most part, uh, the lubricants and the uh, refrigerants are pretty compatible when it comes to chemical reactions like that. So let me focus first um, on viscosity. You know, the definition of viscosity really is resistance to flow. You can think about it how thick a fluid is, something very uh, low viscosity like water or uh, uh, alcohol, and then something very viscous like uh, molasses or a very thick uh, lubricating oil. And viscosity is very important for a lubricant in a refrigeration system to do its primary function, which is to lubricate, to take care and reduce wear on moving parts. So not only the viscosity of the oil as it's purchased, as it's designed, but uh, equipment designers really have to understand the viscosity when it's in the system, because viscosity does vary with temperature. So on hot parts like a compressor, the viscosity will be lowered. We need to be sure there's adequate viscosity even at the higher temperature operation. Uh, viscosity is important, is important for oil return and oil flow. And uh, so for a lot of reasons, um, uh, refrigerant interactions with viscosity are uh, extremely important, especially to OEMs. In fact, I'm going to put a, a chart up here. This is what we call a Daniel plot, and it's a lot of information on here, but it's basically viscosity on one axis and then temperature on the other, and then a series of lines uh, for the pure oil and then oil with various percents of refrigerant dissolved in it. So this really lets people map out exactly what the viscosity is gonna be uh, under any set of working conditions. And again, the uh, you can see where I put with the red line here, that's the pure fluid. And as you get in more and more uh, higher temperatures, the viscosity goes down and you get more and more refrigerant dissolved, the uh, viscosity goes down as well. So this is all important and take into consideration. Next, I wanna talk about solubility. And again, the textbook definition of solubility is the amount of one substance uh, to dissolve or become soluble in another substance. Uh, typically, uh, these are, are different proportions, the solvent being the bulk and then some small amount of solute uh, being dissolved into the solvent. You can think of salt into water or sugar into your coffee. But again, uh, temperature dependent and also depends somewhat on the nature of the solute and the solvent. And solubility is important in a refrigeration system in, in a number of different places. And we have to look at it from both uh, aspects. That is when we have a bulk of oil and we're interested in how much refrigerant is soluble in that. Uh, this comes into play in, uh, for example, the sump of a compressor where you want to have the uh, oil, but there's some refrigerant vapor in contact, and so some refrigerant will get dissolved in that lubricant, lower its viscosity, change its properties. So that's where we want to look at it from the oil-rich side. Uh, on the other side, you have something like a liquid receiver, which is mainly bulk refrigerant, but there is some entrained oil that's circulating in the system, and that gets in the receiver and interacts with the bulk uh, liquid refrigerant. So how much of that oil dissolves in that bulk refrigerant, and so it can be transported out of a liquid receiver uh, back around to the compressor. So it's important to understand solubility from a couple different perspectives. And lastly, I want to talk about miscibility. And miscibility really applies uh, for most of our discussion when you're looking at two different liquid uh, substances and their ability to mix together uh, to form a single homogeneous layer or a single homogeneous fluid, or if they're not particularly miscible, they'll separate and form two liquid layers with one liquid floating on top of the other. And then again, this is important when the, there's refrigerant and lubricant in large amounts together in a system. And traditionally, the lubricants like mineral oil were very miscible with uh, CFCs and HFCs like R22, as you see here. 
But then when we transitioned to HFCs, something like 134A, those did not form miscible fluids with the mineral oil. Hence the industry transitioned to POE oils. And again, there the HFCs uh, were very miscible, formed what nice one phase uh, solutions. It's also interesting to note the HFCs and CFCs were backwards uh, integratable and worked very well with the POE. So 22 soluble in POE and mineral oil, uh, 134A soluble in POE, miscible in POE, but not so much uh, with the mineral oil. So in the next uh, episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about how these uh, factors come into play, these refrigerant lubricant interactions in a working system and talk about things, talk about things like oil circulation rate, uh, oil return, getting oil that gets out of the compressor back around the system so it doesn't get trapped uh, back to the compressor where it has to do uh, its job. And some um, potential issues that can come up if things aren't performing the way they're supposed to. Things like foaming of the oil in the compressor. Um, what happens with uh, lubricant if, it, if there's a burnout and it gets contaminated? Uh, flood back, uh, foaming, I mentioned, oil logging where oil coats uh, a heat exchanger. So there's a lot of things to be concerned about and make sure we understand in an operating system that I'm going to cover in part two. So if there's anything else uh, you w would like me to cover around oil and refrigerants, please always uh, give me a, a shout or hit me up on email. I'll put my contact information here. But appreciate your time and look forward to talking to you soon uh, on the next episode. Have a great week. Be safe. Thanks.